the United Nation General Assembly suspending Russia from its Human Rights Council. That's right. Today's vote follows global outrage over reports Russian forces killed civilians as they retreated from regions around Kyiv. To talk more about today's vote is CBS News correspondent Pamela Falk. She joins us from the United Nations. Pamela, great to see you. So what is the larger impact of the U.N. voting to suspend Russia from its human rights body? And what kind of message does that send both to Russia and the world? Well, here at the, at the United Nations and the General Assembly did vote to suspend Russia. It was a vote of 93 votes in favor, 24 votes against, and 58 abstentions. So if you put together the yes and abstention vote, it's a pretty overwhelming number of 150 nations that basically allowed this to go forward. Now, the significance is not in the powerless 47 nation Geneva based Human Rights Council, it's the fact that the US driven and UK and many other allies of the United States sent a message to Russia that it will be isolated politically in the world in the General Assembly by the show of this because of the brutality of the what they called gross violations of human rights that are cited in the resolution to suspend Russia. So that's the, that's the main impact. It's not in the fact that Russia now won't vote in the Human Rights Council. It's really that despite Russia's veto on the Security Council, the U.S. and other countries have found ways to send the message through the General Assembly to Russia. You know, Pamela, many might find it strange that Russia even sits on the Human Rights Council considering the many alleged human rights abuses against Vladimir Putin. But does the outcome of this vote mean that we could see the International Criminal Court bring charges against Russian officials? Well, the ICC, the International Criminal Court, has begun an inquiry, as has the Human Rights Council, which is the one in which now Russia is suspended, began its own inquiry, the Ukrainians have begun, and they are collecting evidence in real time. And that's what makes it different from the Nuremberg trials after the Holocaust or the Yugoslavian trials of Milosevic. They took years. Right now, there's real-time collection of the evidence of civilians being brutalized and tortured, thus war crimes, that is being collected in real time and therefore a prosecution of Russian generals and even of Russian leadership could be possible. You know, Pamela, really quickly before we let you go, were there any surprising votes? Were there any countries that didn't sort of fall in, in sort of predictable buckets? No, there were more abstentions than with the original vote in February to condemn Russia and tell it to get out. That was 104, uh, 141 countries that voted in favor at that time. More countries abstained because it was a difficult vote to, say, kick a nation off a U.N. body. But Russia had sent a letter of warning to several of these countries, the letter obtained by CBS News, and that letter said even an abstention may, may call into question the relations Russia has with your country. So there were no surprises in terms of movement. There were more countries that just chose not to take a position, and that, vote, that was a vote against Russia. Right. All right. Well, Pamela Falk at the U.N., thank you so much for your great reporting. Absolutely, Tanya and, and Mola. It was good talking.